uh, within the Erasmus Exchange program. Uh, today's topic is nanotechnology in media. I am trying to say something about a study I wrote on uh, media analysis uh, about nanotechnology. Now, uh, contents, uh, contents of uh, my speeches. First, I will say something about my background and, and nanotechnology and media analysis, uh, nanotechnology in media and nanotechnology in Turkish media. First, uh, uh, I am a professor of chemistry education uh, uh, in the Department of Science Education at Kaiser Sonbaşı University in Turkey. Uh, this is the symbol of the city I live. Uh, it's a uh, clock tower. Uh, it is very old, maybe 200 years ago it was built. Uh, also, uh, my research interests uh, are organic chemistry, uh, problem based learning, uh, teaching science and chemistry, and nanotechnology education. Uh, in my MD, uh, I studied on bromination of benzonor vanadium. This is the molecule at high temperature. Uh, in acidic acids, uh, I added ben benzonor vanadium at high temperature, 90 Celsius, uh, for 20 minutes. And then uh, the reactions resulted in formation of some arranged solvatic problems. Here are four of them. And problem based learning. Uh, is my another uh, interest topic. Uh, in my PhD, I aim to determine the effect of problem-based learning on teacher, teacher candidates' uh, academic achievements and attitudes towards uh, chemistry. Uh, the results show that uh, there was significant difference between experimental and control groups' students' achievements and attitudes towards uh, chemistry. In this study, uh, some problem cases were developed. Uh, these were about gas concepts in chemistry, and we derived these problems from daily life events. Here is some of, one of them. Uh, it's named uh, Confession of an Engineer. Uh, this problem is about uh, chemistry engineer. A uh, chemistry engineer decided to do an experiment and he has uh, nitrogen gas uh, and then tried to uh, raise of its uh, temperature and pressure uh, and then it, uh, he made a mistake and then he tried to do reason of mistakes. Uh, this problem uh, aimed to teach students the differences between general gas concepts and ideal gas concepts. Uh, after the solving problems, we aim to our students learn to difference between two concepts, gas concepts. Yes. Uh, teaching science and chemistry, uh, I am a former teacher. I taught uh, five for five years in different public schools and then uh, uh, now I am teaching in a graduate undergraduate level different classes uh, introduction introduction to chemistry special topics in chemistry and teaching practice are the courses I teach. Oh. In recent years I have been studying on nanotechnology education topics. Uh, such as public understanding of nanotechnology, design some activities to inform nanotechnology student, uh, to inform students about nanotechnology and the media coverage of nanotechnology. Uh, two articles on my studies were published in the uh, in some uh, journals. Uh, one of them is about a survey a survey on nanotechnology in the view of Turkish public. Uh, in this study, uh, a questionnaire uh, has implemented almost 1,000 uh, Turkish people and then we analyze, I analyzed the results. Uh, second fund, uh, a course uh, was developed 
to cr cr create uh, informal undergraduate students on nanotechnology. Um, so I would like to say something about the university I came. Uh, its name is Gazi Osman Pasha uh, University. Gazi Pasha University is founded in 1992. Um, there are almost 1,000 researchers and 30,000 students, graduate and undergraduate levels. There are uh, many, uh, there are some institutes, research and development centers, and faculties, including fine arts, education, engineering, and medical schools. Uh, yes. Also, the city uh, I live, the uh, name is Tokat. It is located north side of Turkey, it is so close to Black Sea. Although it is close to Black Sea, uh, it has a climate, a Mediterranean climate. It is, uh, it is a medium sized city and uh, it has uh, a hot summer Mediterranean climate. Also, it is a historical city, it has a deep history, so there are many kind of historical buildings and castles, bridges, masks and churches. Also, agriculture is the people's most important source of life, like wood, a tomato, peach, cherry, and apple and other kind of fruits uh, are some of the products raised in Tokat. Uh, as, you, as you see, uh, there are many uh, historical buildings and uh, Ottoman style buildings uh, houses there. Uh, what's nano? Uh, I would like to say something about uh, nano. Uh, nano, is a, nano is a science of very, very small. Uh, it's about manipulation of a matter on the nano scale. Uh, ordinary materials such as carbon often exhibit unpredictable characteristics to the nano scale, such as extraordinary strength, chemical reactivity, electrical conductivity, or other characteristics that the same material doesn't exhibit at the nano macro scale. Another example is about the gold. Gold medal is normal, macro size of gold medal is normal, the colors is yellow uh, and stable metal. But on the nano scale, its color changing from purple to pink to red, also its reactivity is changed. Uh, so, nano skin is important because many materials uh, characteristics change on the nano scale. It makes the nanotechnology important. What is the, uh, it is the important section of nanotechnology. And nanometer uh, nanotechnology deal with nano sized structures. One nanometer equals to one billionth of a meter. It is wide width of approximately 10 atoms. Here are the, uh, some examples of nanotechnology uh, and a human uh, and hands and almost with 10 centimeters. Nanotechnology concerns about 1 to 10 nanometer uh, width uh, made, uh, structures. Also, uh, a brief story about nanotechnology. The first ever concept was presented in 1959 by Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman is a cornerstone of nanotechnology. He's a physicist, I think. And uh, he made a speech uh, in 1959, named uh, there is a plant room at the bottom. He talked about up-down technologies, and then uh, this speech is accepted to the starting of nanotechnology. Also, he uh, studied on uh, Manhattan Project uh, during World War II. Uh, in this project, uh, he helped the development of atom bomb. Um, the second person is uh, Noriyu Taniguchi. Uh, the term of nanotechnology had been coined uh, by 
here. Also, uh, as you know, technology and science affects each other. When the tech science develops, technology uh, develops. And so, when the invention of scanning tunnel and microscope in 1981 and the discovery of colorant in 1985 lead to emergence of nanotechnology. Also, the uh, Gerd Bingi and the Erich Bogrus, the inventor of STM microscope, won the Nobel Prize in 1981 or 82. Uh, as for applications of nanotechnology, there are many kinds of applications uh, of nanotechnology. You can see some of them and medicine, military, textile, computer, electronics, and robot. I think uh, uh, medicine is the most important uh, application area of nanotechnology because the nanomedicine tries to overcome uh, some of the difficult experience, experienced by normal medical approach. Drugs may lead to the side effect due to poor delivery at actual Side or site of diseases. For example, drugs must avoid uh, healthy tissues and organs. So, nanomedicine plays an important role in the ensuring enough of the drug enters the body. Uh, let's watch a video. Now, however, there is a way to enhance tumor cell death without adding toxicity in standard radiotherapy. Nano X-ray nanoparticles are incredibly small crystals, so tiny that 5,000 could fit around the perimeter of a human hair. These crystals are surrounded with a soft protective layer minimizing unwanted interaction with the body and suspended in a water-based solution. In nano X-ray treatment, the particle suspension is injected with a standard syringe directly into a tumor, where the nano crystals accumulate and wait for activation. At this point, the patient that received nano x-ray has a major advantage over a standard radiotherapy patient. That's because during standard radiotherapy treatment, the body is exposed to x-rays. X-rays react with water to produce free radicals, which in turn destroy DNA and other molecular structures, killing cells. Unfortunately, these free radicals destroy healthy cells just as well as cancer cells, and radiotherapy is therefore limited by the healthy tissue's damage. But in nano x-ray therapy, standard x-rays activate the nano x-ray particles in the patient's tumor. The nanocrystals are optimized to absorb more x-rays and produce many more free radicals than water, damaging the tumor cell's DNA and cellular structure more severely than the surrounding healthy tissue. Because of the nanoparticles, the x-ray's effect is amplified and localized within the tumor, allowing for a targeted strike against cancerous cells. While healthy tissues receive the standard dose of radiation, the tumor dies much more quickly. Just one injection of nanoparticles can amplify several radiotherapy sessions, shrinking the tumor over time. Because it uses standard radiotherapy equipment and works with a purely physical principle, nano x-ray therapy can be used to fight a wide variety of cancers. Nano x-ray is the next step in radiotherapy treatments. And it's brought to you by Nanobiotics. This was the one, one example of nanomedicine uh, applications. Uh, nanotechnology is making lighter, stronger, smaller, faster, and durable uh, uh, devices. For example, this bicycle is produced by GMC factory. Its frame is supported by uh, carbon nanotypes, and I think its weight is. Uh, 700, 800 grams, it is so lighter than a normal uh, bicycle. Uh, nanotechnology is emphasized an important and rapidly growing uh, area. This technology is considered to the next industrial revolution, so uh, nanotechnology market is expected to grow fast also 
medical applications are predicted to the lead of this growth. Uh, however, I can say that uh, the ultimate success of a new technology is dependent on public involvement, support and understanding of its benefits and possible risks. success or failure of any technology and products. So many studies have been uh, carried out to reveal public understandings of uh, nanotechnology. The results of the studies show that public uh, people from different countries had, were unfamiliar with nanotechnology and most of the people little, uh, heard little or nothing about it. Although researchers found that public attitudes toward nanotechnology were generally positive, especially in the United States and in Canada. In conclusion, people are, are not familiar with nanotechnology, but they have positive attitudes toward nanotechnology. In this scope, uh, some researchers claim that media coverage has a direct uh, effect on public opinion on a particular issue. Um, therefore, media may play a significant role in the initial stage of debates uh, on emerging technology. Uh, especially when the formal education in science ends, uh, media become the most important, most available and maybe sometimes the only source for the public to gain information uh, about scientific discoveries. So, uh, therefore, the uh, media is important for emerging technologies. Um, yes, uh, framing theory is one of the uh, ways to examine the media coverage. Uh, also, this theory provides a foundation of, for review how information is shaped, packaged and presented to audience. Uh, frames help journal, journalists determine how best to organize, organize the news and package it for the audience. Uh, frames used by newspapers have the power to influence in, uh, perceptions and shape opinions of the general public, thus affecting nanotechnology acceptance and adaptation. Um, in my study, uh, I studied on uh, Turkish print media uh, coverage of nanotechnology. Um, I used a systematic content analysis to write, evaluate how uh, information about nanotechnology is presented in the media. Uh, this study roughly organized three sections. In first sections, a widespread national newspaper were determined to get nanotechnology news and the second section, 76 articles uh, were derived from the newspaper and the last section, the articles were analyzed by using content analysis. The newspaper isolated, uh, event, a newspaper isolated uh, to determine uh, nanotechnology articles. Uh, the reason uh, why I choose this newspaper? It is about it is uh, its uh, accessibility because none of the other newspapers uh, don't provide full access. Uh, the relevant articles I choose 76 articles by using keyword nanotechnology. Uh, I saw that 76 articles contain the constraint reference to nanotechnology. Then uh, each article was analyzed using a coding scheme uh, including quantitative and qualitative details. Um, uh, let's look at the coding scheme. Uh, yes. Uh, the, the scheme includes, uh, for example, news data when the uh, article was published and author of articles 
and type of article, and themes and frames using used in the articles. Uh, let's talk some about themes and frames. Themes are related to content of the particular text. For example, what is the story about? Uh, maybe the story will be about uh, medical applications. Uh, this is the theme theme of the article. Also, a frame gives information about the way of the particular news is presented. For example, how is the story told? For example, um, the theme may be medical application, but the story, uh, the article frame, she may be framed by the economic side of the medical application. This is the frame of the article. Um, focus country in the article uh, and benefit and risk of nanotechnology and tone of articles. The tones may be positive, negative, and neutral. Yes, now we can see. Findings. Uh, first, let's look at distribution of articles by year from 1991 to 2015. As seen in the table uh, chart, the first article was published in 1991 in, in, the, in the media. Uh, last one is 2015. As seen in the chart, uh, the population of the articles uh, are rising is rising uh, up to 2010 and then a dramatic uh, decrease is occurring and also uh, the most of the articles were published between 2007 and 2010 uh, what is the reason uh, the most of the articles uh, were published in these states uh, the reason is uh, in, in my country, uh, some research and development centers, some nanotechnology research and development centers were opened in the States. Uh, maybe uh, this is the, uh, maybe the media focused on the on this news this openings. Uh, second reason, second results is about order of articles. Uh, it is amazing the results show that there was no data on order the majority of the articles. Uh, only uh, six article was uh, six article was uh, written by scientists. The rest of articles written by journalists. about order of articles. Um, also, uh, article when we see the article type in the um, media, uh, most of the articles uh, um, there is no data on article type uh, featured. Uh, also, there is no interview uh, about nanotechnology. Uh, yes, frames. Uh, in the articles, there were two, four, six, eight kind of frames, uh, but most uh, most of the frames, uh, the most important frames discussed in the articles is about scientific research and discovery. Second one is uh, future applications of nanotechnology. Also. It is important the national success frame, uh, especially in developing countries, medias, uh, national success is important frame. Uh, in this kind of uh, articles, uh, focus on uh, national uh, success of companies or scientists on nanotechnology. So, uh, another chart showing the results about frames in the article. As teams, uh, in terms of teams, nanotechnology research and education centers 
uh, is the most discussed uh, theme in the area. Also, medical and electronic applications are the second and third place in the themes of articles. Uh, as we see in the first section, first uh, <coughs> findings, uh, research and education centers uh, are the most discussed in the media. Uh, also, as in focus country, uh, as we expected, Turkey is the most discussed country. Also, uh, other countries such as European countries and in especially European countries, uh, studies on European countries discussed in the articles too. Uh, yes. Benefits and risks of nanotechnology. Uh, many research, research show that uh, in media, the media focused on mostly benefits of nanotechnology. The same results in my study uh, most of the articles on mm, nearly 60% focused on benefits of nanotechnology. Only uh, three articles uh, article were dis uh, discussed the risk of nanotechnology. It is a small percent. Uh, the tone of nanoparticles nano, uh, Articles are positive. Uh, only there are four, six uh, articles negative tone. Uh, also, um, uh, interpol reliability is important for um, this kind of studies. Uh, so, the coding process was conducted by two persons, but one of them is mine. The other one is uh, a trained researcher to uh, we code it together to ensure the intercoder reliability. The results uh, we found uh, 0.63 uh, mm, by using Cohen Kappa. It is an enough percent uh, for intercoder reliability. Uh, yes, uh, in total. Uh, 76 articles were determined, published between 1991 and uh, 2015. Also, the study showed that uh, journalists were the most active group in the Turkish press debate on nanotechnology. Surprisingly, uh, only a few articles were written by scientists. It is an important res result. Also, research and education centers and medical applications of nanotechnology themes were used commonly in the articles. And scientific discoveries and project was the most dominant frame in the Turkish media. Uh, and future applications of nanotechnology were was mentioned second frequently frame. Uh, as for the tones of articles. Uh, as expected, the tones of articles were definitely uh, positive. Uh, also, uh, the article, most of the articles focused on benefits of nanotechnology. Only three articles focused on uh, negative uh, risk of nanotechnology. Two articles mm, published in 2001 of them, one of uh, one in 2010. Uh, the majority of articles uh, focused on scientific achievements uh, of Turkish scientists and companies. And lastly, uh, uh, this study can be seen as a starting point uh, for future research that will include broader variety of media sources. Therefore, uh, uh, further studies on this subjects are needed in order to gain knowledge about uh, presentation of nanotechnology in Turkish media. Uh, also, I would like to thank you for your attendance and patience and accepting me here um, for my presentation. 
Is there any question uh, we can talk? So. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thanks for the interesting presentation. I, I was thinking, uh, wondering about your conclusion as that you were surprised that only some 7% of the articles were written by scientists. Uh, uh, what kind of uh, newspaper is it? I, to me it sounds like normal that uh, most of the articles in a newspaper, if, you think, if I think of a Finnish newspaper, yes. yeah, it's uh, normal. It's very normal, it's very rare actually that a scientist would uh, write an article there. It can be that the journalist interviews a uh, uh, scientist for yeah. an article, but still the article is written by a journalist. journalist yeah. But how come you find it so surprising? Surprised because I saw uh, there were another studies uh, conducted in other countries, but uh, in those studies, uh, studies show that uh, most of the articles written by uh, scientists, uh, writers, um, so it was a surprise for me also, only uh, six articles were written by scientists. I thought that uh, more than articles uh, were written by scientists, so it was a surprise for me. Also, it was not a surprise to me that um, most of the articles were positive and discussed about benefits of nanotechnology. Maybe this explains the reason why the public has positive attitudes toward nanotechnology, uh, because the media is the most of public uh, media is the only source for most of the public about nano. Uh, this results show that media affects the public's ideas importantly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.